Well, that's the next conversation we're having this morning. And to have that, we have Oji Uchenna Oji, who is Commissioner for Information and State Orientation in Ebonyi State. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. A lot has been happening in Ebonyi. Is that correct? Very correct. Um, what's happening? Or rather, maybe, well, since we, you've been here quite a number of times, so what's new? Yeah, I can say that um, it's been a very wonderful moment of continued harvest of uh, democracy dividends in Ebony State, from human capital to infrastructure, from good uh, governance and all ramifications to uh, effective and robust, robust leadership that will continue to uh, put Ebony on top. Uh, among the committee of states in the nation. Uh, but let me talk about the recent, um, you know, our performance index that uh, we have uh, garnered uh, since 2001 to date. Uh, the budget office uh, made an assessment looking at uh, the federal allocation that every state is receiving. It's, we call it a state of state um, um, uh, performance index you know, cutting across the 36 states of the Federation. So this organization looked at the federal allocation, transparency, accountability, of course, in issue of our physical um, performance. And of course, in doing that, they looked at other variables and other organizations like Bureau of uh, Statistics, and of course, uh, Debt Management Office, you know, foreign and local uh, debt, as concerns other states. A bony state, um, came first in three cases. An issue of prudent allocation of scarce resources, which, what, which is what economically politics means. A bond state came first among the states of the Federation. A bond state that was created in 1996 was still having the lowest federal allocation, one of the three uh, states. Now, again, in the area of transparency, accountability, and the area of uh, prudent deployment, of um, scarce resources, Ebony came first. Then in the area of investment, investment in capital uh, projects, you know, looking at uh, recurrent expenditure and capital expenditure, Ebony State came first. Now in overall rating, in all ramifications of physical performance, Ebony State came second among the 36 states of the Federation. Now look Looking at uh, the viability based on economic uh, facilities on ground by this current gov the current governments in all jurisdictions, uh, the state government came forth. Number four, in the whole federation, looking at self-reliance in terms of empowerment, job creation, the uh, state came first. That is number four. And now, um, when you go to the area of health, World Bank in 2018, Video is no longer a recent uh, analysis, made the, uh, what they call a state of state uh, index, health index. And the Ebony State is said to be above average in terms of uh, health uh, development. And in the area of education, of course, you know that uh, before the governor came on board, we are quite educationally less privileged. That is our tag, That's, that was our status. But when the governor came on board, just two years after he came on board, we are lifted. <laughs> Today, we are no longer among the educationally less privileged states. We are among the first best 10 states in WIAC, one of the best states in the area of NUC assessment on education. For instance, in 2017, NUC made an assessment. Uh, uh, Mr. Oji, is this all proven? It's proven. Where, where, can, where can we get information I am referring that verifies to, all this? I am referring to the organizations responsible, the dates. The budget office of 2021, if you go to Abuja, Minister no, of talking Minister, about the education one. On education, yes. if you go to NUC, NUC index of 2017, made an assessment about the local government in the whole federation that has the highest number of undergraduates. Do you know the local government that came first? Ebony State. Out of seven, seven, You said local government. government. Ebony State is not a local government. A, a state, uh, sorry, local government in Ebony State. So that is equal local government. Equal? That, to the credit of Ebony State, that's why I said Ebony State came first. Now, in the area of the best medical student who schooled in one of the schools in Nigeria, particularly in Ebony State, somebody from Ebony State who schooled in Ebony came first. 
and jump. So these are indicators showing that uh, we are doing quite a lot. But then let's go to what actually that uh, government has done to warrant all of this. I can tell you that before 2015, we have got nothing like roads. We were the lowest, most rejected, most neglected. But today after Lagos and Abuja, we are the best. Uh, you, you may say which organization has said this, but no, you need to no, come to the say, Even if you say so yourself. Oh my God. So <laughs> all you need to do is to come to the boy instead that you appreciate all of this. Mm. Again, yeah, um, but maybe start, Mr. Um, let's, look, let's look at the IGR of a Boeing state. Um, we've got figures that show that uh, the IGR went up by 82.3% in two years. How was that achieved? Uh, it was achieved by the uh, shared date of hard work, by prudency, by zero, zero tolerance for waste and for corruption. Our governor is a man of ingenuity. So when he came on board, he saw we had a lot of leakages. We had areas where we were not harnessing our IGR. So the governor had to block all the leakages. Of course, try to automate some of our revenue generation uh, uh, points. And that actually uh, started to really gather momentum in our revenue generation propensity. And so as I speak with you, like you did say, we went from zero in terms of index to 80% as it were. So it doubled more than two times what we were collecting when the, before the governor came on board. And I can tell you also that it is also born out of uh, the sheer need uh, to, to, to you know, deliver the dividends of democracy to the people. The governor is a very selfless leader. We believe that if you must work with him, you must prepare to make sacrifice, you must prepare to walk the way he's working to give the people of the state the best. And so everybody who is coming, if you are a contractor, if you are involved in the revenue collection process, you must prepare to tighten your belt, not to end what doesn't belong to you. So that is actually the secret behind that. And the legislations also we are made to ensure that all of these things are harmonized. There is no issue of a double taxation regime in a Bonnie state. So it is easy, it is convenient. Of course, collection process is through E, E, -E process. And of course, you know that we also enjoy E governance in a Bonnie state. You know, and so these are the contributory factors. Again, the fact that a Bonnie state aggressively was developed, you know, under six years of the governance of, of our dear governor made it possible for transporters if you are going to a uh, cross river if you are going to Benue state if you are going to Abia state even if you are coming from any you would like to pass through a boy because it can be sure that any part uh, you are going you know from a boy it can be sure you first of all enjoy a wonderful road or if you are coming through a boy or to a boy it can be sure that the moment you enter into a boy state you'll be greeted with dualized road in all the federal roads. And again, flyovers will welcome you from every point of the boundary, whether Abia, Enugu, Cross River, Benue, and all of that. And so this has Mr. made Ajay. transporters to, to, to uh, you know, you know, enjoy flying through a new state. Um, Mr. Oji, I recall uh, one, one, one of your visits to us, you had pictures of a Boeing state and all those beautiful fountains at your junctions and roundabouts. Uh, my question to you now is um, some literature about Nigeria still states Nigeria as a place where there is hardly potable water. Is there potable water in Ebonyi State? And what has the government been doing about providing potable water for the people? Thank you. You have asked this question the other time, and oh, you will be asking it again. <laughs> uh, let me say that the government of Ebony State has been doing a lot uh, to ensure that uh, social amenities are provided, apart from road, light. Uh, you know, we can't fix the power, but the governor has fixed uh, uh, the street lights such that uh, it has also increased night life and, and trade. And so, um, for water, I can say that the government is doing a lot to rehabilitate our water facilities. Uh, the, Ezilo water scheme, the Alfred water scheme, uh, you know, started uh, by the last administration, uh, the Okawa water scheme. They are being uh, revamped as I speak with you, and we are beginning to gradually reticulate the uh, various parts of the metropolis, such that uh, when 
it is fully reticulated. It can be sure that water will be found uh, fully in a body state. But obviously, uh, a lot of investment has, made, has been made in ensuring that we get water. But don't forget that the body state is peculiar in terms of the geophysics of the area. And that has really uh, affected the issue of borehole, even though we are investing a lot in putting borehole for the, for the rural communities. But it has actually affected the uh, the water uh, situation in a bony state. But I think that uh, uh, before the governor bows out that we are going to make a great difference in that regard. Okay. Uh, speak to us about security. Security is what protects businesses, protects investments. So um, we just, just a few days ago, we understand that some uh, consultants to a bony state government talked about, uh, you know, government now being aware of those who are behind the insecurity. Can you confirm that? Yeah, let me say that um, a very proactive and responsible government, as we have in a budget state, we always try to go beyond the um, you know, managing security situation to go into preventive measures. And in going into preventive measures, you look at intelligence. And that is the very essence of the creation of a Bubago. Apart from the fact that the people of the South East said they needed a, a, com a common security outfit for the South East, but the state government also felt that there is need to really enhance the security measures in the state. And so Bubagu was constituted you know, under the law of 2021 last year. And part of the mandate of Bubagu is to gather inf information, to document information, to analyze data on security issues, to collaborate with conventional security agencies. So I can tell you that in all of these things, we have also found out that uh, non-state actors actually contributed to the recent uh, you know, uh, insecurity that we, we are having before now, as I speak with you. Uh, we've done a lot to really uh, tame uh, that kind of situation. What government is doing is to ensure our engagement. We don't believe that militarization is all there is for you to contend with or to curtail insecurity in a place. But engagement, talking to the collective sensibilities of the people concerned, not just the actors, some of them are, are just street boys, but also our, our stakeholders, religious leaders, town union know, leaders, uh, of course, uh, community leaders, to see how they can talk to their subjects or their words. And that has really made an impact. Today, as I speak with you, uh, but it is a very peaceful state. Uh, doesn't have the kind of situation that we hear in other climes. For instance, on Mondays, we go about our business because the actors have understood that the only way to appreciate this governor that has done fantastically well is not to destroy the facilities, whether public or private. Mm -hmm. it's, not also, it's not also to destroy lives. And that is why we are having uh, the kind of peace that we are having. For those that are really finding embers of hate, embers of insecurity, we are actually tracing them. And we are looking at inflammatory publications that are capable of aggravating situations of violence and, uh, and uh, maybe communal um, <clears throat> disturbances. So those people that are really going through social media to give false information, fake news, with a bit to plunging communities into crisis, we are gradually surrounding or rather rounding them off. And of course, through our law on, face, on uh, fake uh, information, that is cybercrime law, we are doing a lot to contend with those uh, elements. We call them enemies of, of government, yes, enemies of the state, those who do want the progress that we have, uh, we have made to endure. Let me mention that uh, a state that has uh, made um, a record as a state with the biggest shopping mall, as a state with the, the highest number of flyovers. The, 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 whole after, idea, the whole idea of talking about, my, my apologies, Mr. Oji, the whole idea of talking about the security is to protect those investments that you've talked about. Now, one of the you know, issues that you may want to speak to concerning security as well is uh, what happened uh, between the border communities of uh, Ebony and um, Ben State uh, about a week ago. Uh, the Senate, you know, spoke to that you know, situation as well that claimed many lives across the divide. What exactly happened in that regard? Yeah, I am sure I've not uh, been uh, fully briefed about uh, the very point you're making. We've had recently a case of, uh, you know, our, um, 
um, attack on security officials. We've had a little case of um, uh, child trafficking, some of which we are missing the story. There was a case of uh, uh, um, child trafficking that was uh, um, discovered in, 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 in um, August State, and it was traced to a body state. But media did misunderstand it, uh, mis did misunderstand it by saying that it occurred in Ebony, but it actually occurred in Benue. But the subjects, the, the victims are from Ebony, and of course the suspect is also from Ebony State. The case of Benue Ebony State uh, happened in the past, and I can tell you that uh, one of them was a case of Ebonians living in the borders of. Um, of um, uh, Benue State, uh, by virtue of the geographical definition of that area, is said to be uh, uh, an axis of, uh, of Benue State. Uh, so they had a clash, and that is the zone of uh, Senator David Mark, and uh, they had a clash. And uh, I mean, some some attackers went and uh, uh, you know you know attacked those Ebonians living in Benue State. And uh, as I speak with you, the situation is under con under control. But if there is any recent one, as in a fresh one, I am not aware of that. Well, this is something that happened uh, last week. I don't know if it's the same. Uh, well, well, Sandy spoke to it last week uh, between the Eza and Efion people of Benue and Ebony states. Yeah, I think you are getting it wrong, very, very wrong. Uh, Eza, Efion, and Efion are all in Ebony state, or Huku local government area in Ebony state. They have had a, an age long, close to 100 years of a land dispute, but unfortunately, because of activities of some politicians within the place, the matter got aggravated and it led to the destruction of lives and properties. And up to now, the situation uh, has been a bit checkered. Uh, but I can say that the governor has been actually on top of the matter, getting to the root of the matter. Those responsible for that crisis have been cracked down, and uh, some of them are um, you know, with the police, and some have been prosecuted. Um, some are in the police net, as I speak with you. Uh, the only situation there is that um, uh, they are not from the same kind of uh, clan, and so they are having issue of um, ownership on dispute on ownership of that land. But it's something that you need to take some measures that will not rather aggravate the situation. The measures will be to appeal to their conscience, to lay down their arms, no matter what has been done, the oil that has been spilled. And so that is just the situation. So it's not a Benue Ebony issue, it's just within Ebony State. Okay. Okay, okay go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, the COVID-19 exposed the underbelly of the health sector in Nigeria. And um, at that time that we were all locked in, in our various countries and nobody could travel, um, even the rich and mighty could not leave the country for medical attention. And that led many Nigerians to believe that COVID is going to make uh, governments you know, state governments pay more attention to the health sector because the poor man, the rich man, we were all stuck here. Nobody could go anywhere to seek medical attention. Um, so I think the media has been looking, you know, very closely at this sector and wondering why no huge steps are being taken in the health sector all over the country so that we're not caught napping again like we did during COVID? Yeah, perhaps the case is different in Ebony State. Yeah, before 2015, we had issues of deficit in um, a healthcare delivery uh, system, both the primary healthcare, the secondary and the tertiary healthcare facilities in Ebony State. We are in a state of shambles before the governor came on board. But when he came on board, he identified health as very critical. For you to even be educated, you need to be healthy. For you to talk about pursuing your means of livelihood, you need to be healthy. That is why, apart from creating the Ministry of, 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 of sorry, apart from the establishment of the Ministry of Health, uh, which was strengthened by our governor when he came on board, he also created 
the Ministry of uh, Human Capital Development, and one of its mandate is to ensure for the nutrition nutrition of the our young populace. And so health is critical. So what did the governor d d do? The governor has to really establish access road to the existing facilities. Now he had to ensure that every ward has primary health care facilities, every ward 171 wards in the state. Now he had to renovate those ones that we are in shambles. Now uh, across the 13 local government... Once over 171 words okay. of the state. Um, uh, each of the local government has an exist, I mean, a, a functional um, general hospital somewhere in existence, but when he came, he had to revamp them and make them to be functional, of course, had to really send the medical personnel. Now, in addition to that, the governor also had to give a lot of attention to tertiary health care uh, service delivery in Ebon instead. So today, as I speak with you, we not only have COVID-19 center of excellence that is the first in the southeast, we had to decentralize the operations to the various zones of the, of the state, the three zones. So we have uh, units, uh, COVID-19 centers of excellence in the three zones. We also have what is called a virology center that does uh, tackle the issue of Lassa fever. Before the governor came on board, it was part of the problem of Ebony State. It was like the guinea worm of Ebony at that time. So when he came on board, what did he do? First of all, had to establish the virology center, which uh, is still the first and only in the southeast, and one of the two best in the whole federation. And that virology center has done a lot to tackle issues of Lassa fever. Now, the issue of uh, other tertiary uh, healthcare uh, uh, facilities. Do you know we have Africa's biggest University of Medical Sciences? The governor did conceptualize. The governor did build. The governor got approval today, as I speak with you. That university is going on the best most beautiful university in the whole of Africa. And it's going to be a center of are those, excellence. Are those pictures from the teaching hospital? Uh, um, no, that is one of the fa medical um, facilities uh, in Ebony State. And uh, I think this is the virology center. Then we have also the I mean, centers for the treatment of um, uh, heart diseases, uh, cancer, liver problems. And there's going to be a center of excellence for the production of dialyzers. No any other country in, the, in Africa has that kind of uh, facility, except the Bonny State is now about to start, but their school has started. So it's going to be providing the educational need and the health care need of the people of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, we also have what is called the uh, School of Nursing and Midwifery. The idea of government is that apart from getting all these facilities in place, we have to really get the personnel that will drive those facilities. So this is aimed at producing nurses, midwives that will help in attending to medical needs of the people of Nigeria and Africa. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have School of Health in Boda. It's also aimed at raising health officials that will be serving in all of these uh, healthcare uh, uh, service centers. And so, I have told you what back made an analysis in 2018 and said that we are both, but after all, that we are even much more than that of federal government healthcare uh, index. So is there, forgive me for this, I'm just going to have to ask you, is there a policy of government in Ebony State that says every public officer must patronize government uh, facilities? Uh, it does depend on your conception and perception. I mean, especially when you say that, you know, it's the best in Africa. Yeah, it is the best in terms of the, the way and manner it is established. In terms of the facilities, in terms of the objectives, is the best. And it's for Nigeria and it's for Africa and it's for the world. And the government is trying to work with the private sector to drive the management of those facilities, especially the University of Medical Sciences. Government has so come operationally, to uh, would you say the same? Uh, as, uh, are we approaching, struggling to get to the best as well operationally? Because the infrastructure is one, I mean... Operating it, that's another thing. Already. Yeah, that is why the policy direction of government is that uh, all of these critical facilities, not only the, that University of Medical Sciences, the shopping mall, the international airport, and some other facilities, including the national market, that the individual persons, corporate bodies, need to really manage them. And so what government does is to involve the private sector through public-private partnership deal. And that is the way to go to ensure sustainability ability to ensure enhancement of revenue generation process and employment processes. But Mr. Oji, I have not spoken to my, my question about 
is there a government policy concerning patronage by public office holders in the government? Yeah, let me tell you that patronage is very important. It's as a matter, a matter of patriotism. Through our policy and through our political uh, you know, culture, our idea is that if you are a government official, you don't need to fly out of the country. You need to patronize the local facilities. That is the only way we can guarantee self-confidence. You know, that is the way we can also make others to appreciate that it is working. Need so to or should? Yeah, what I'm saying is that we have a policy that okay. does suggest that we must uh, patronize our local content. Okay. But then traditionally too, you know, people are known for their honor and integrity. If you must say you have this, you must try to lead by example by, you know, going around it. And so uh, by a policy direction of government, every office holder is meant to really go to those facilities to assess medication. And, do, uh, do you use those facilities? Yes, we use that. You, 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 personally. Oh, my God. Unfortunately, I'm a village man. <laughs> I use whatever is made locally. Uh, uh, so I use it. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, but uh, speak to us about this other thing that uh, that's, I believe it's government also that did it, the Ebony uh, Health Insurance Program. Because I ask this one because... Uh, all of the uh, human capital development, economic development, and all these figures that you have been talking about would be nothing if they, we don't have a strong enough human capital, uh, healthy human capital uh, in, in the state to, to, to take on these things. And I understand that last year, there was a hundred million naira kind of funding for, health, for the health insurance scheme in Ebony State. Yeah, how, is that, even, how is that going? Yeah, even though I don't have uh, much details about the operations, I know in the first place the governor had to cause the establishment of uh, that health care ins insurance scheme. And uh, we are uh, trying to start with the civil servants, of course, they are uh, very uh, you know, fundamental contributions they have to make. So uh, I think the government caused uh, the leadership of the labor union to uh, engage with all the uh, beneficiaries, though that will be beneficiaries of that scheme, to ensure that they uh, appreciate the need to be part of that scheme. And so thereafter, all the civil servants will be made to be beneficiaries of that scheme. And that same thing is going to be applicable with uh, our, you know, the rural communities through the local government chairman, through the what we call the coordinators of development center. So they are going to make their, you know, counterpart contributions to ensure that that um, health insurance is uh, uh, given to um, all persons, uh, especially the civil servants, and of course the the, the poor men and women in, in the rural communities. Mm. Of course, for civil for for public servants, it's just a matter of policy that they should also patronize the the scheme. Mm. Well, lastly. How, how ready is a Boeing state for business? I ask that, uh, please don't, not just the figures now, but operationally uh, on, the, on the grounds in a Boeing state. How, oh, oh, what's the ease of doing business uh, scheme in the state? How easy is it to do business in a Boeing state? Yeah, uh, we are looking holistically and comprehensively at all those factors that will make for ease of do doing business. Uh, infrastructure is very important and um, legislations uh, are also very important and automation of revenue generation processes very important and also uh, giving tax holidays and all of that. But importantly security is also very critical and we have had a lot of uh, advantages in all of these areas that I have mentioned that is why, as I speak with you, a lot of investors are indicating interest to come to Ebony State. On the 1st of March, I'm not advertising for them, uh, 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 the, the computer village in, in Lagos will be, will be coming to Ebony State to flag off uh, the fund, auto lay foundation for a uh, computer village in Ebony State. We have Ibeto Cement. Uh, in, in which, in which uh, city? In the capital city, in the, okay. within the metropolis. And we have um, uh, Ibeto Cement Industry. We have pharmaceutical company that has indicated interest to invest five million US dollars. We have a lot of uh, uh, companies that are springing up in our state. The idea is that uh, given the facilities put in place by the governor, 
make it a, a point state to be the most beautiful, the most secured state after Lagos and Abuja. So investors, whether at home and abroad, can be sure that because of our airport, the international airport, which is factored up after Abuja and Lagos, they can fly to a bunch instead, and they wouldn't have any issue about insecurity. Absolutely. It will be on a minimal basis. Oji Uchena Oji, it's always a pleasure to talk to, to you when you whenever you come on this program. He's Commissioner for Information and State Orientation. Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. So it's the, what do you call it now? The home stretch. The home stretch. After now, stay with us.